this was sitting out the entire stream that I was just doing for caffeine and crypto. Do you know what's in this box? I do. Let's go look, take a look. Removal of all the packing reveals one of the best gaming CPUs that just came out, the AMD Ryzen 9800X 3D. Now, I did have to bundle it because these CPUs sold out so fast uh, individually. So I had to get an X870E or his Pro motherboard. Perfectly acceptable, but my B650 with this CPU would still run just fine. However, we're gonna be upgrading my computer with both of these components and checking out some of the gaming performance on some of the titles that I have. I don't have every single title, but I will present some of that data to you. But I'm so excited to actually have this CPU and to get it on launch day uh, was a chore, but I'm glad we did. So let's go ahead and get these two installed. If you have a really, really old BIOS, like older than this one on the Aorus Elite AX, like step up to F21 and then go to F32D which supports the 9800X3D or even the later X3D CPUs. All right, so this is an old case, not the latest and greatest, but it does make my life easier because I can just swing this door open and get direct access. So all I gotta do is take off these two screws here, just loosen them up just enough so I can get the CPU cooler. Uh, I forget which AIO this is, I'll name it in just a second, but disconnect this USB and then I'm gonna use the same uh, thermal paste that I used before uh, which is the Cryonaut Extreme, the pink stuff that really works really well, doesn't cure, and does really good even for LN2 cooling or exotic cooling. And this AIO is the Corsair uh, H150i Pro. So very easy to do, makes life easier, especially with AM4 socket or AM5 socket or any AMD socket to be for that fact, because right, it's always used the same kind of general setup. Just need to loosen it enough to where I can you know kind of get it out of, away from that hook right there and then pop this sucker off swap out the cpu and then run some tests which i will bring you back for that after i have benchmarked a number of different applications that i use on a day-to-day -day or on a regular basis before we get onto the data two things i want to warn you about if you don't have your bitlocker recovery key backed up in some form or fashion just know that swapping out the cpu and doing the bios update is going to pop up what's called an ftmp firmware uh warning right so i chose y or yes to reset the ftmp but then you encounter another issue which is uh your windows account but if you don't have access to the bitlocker keys and your hard drives are locked and you can't recover it you will lose that data and will have to reinstall windows sometimes not a big deal a lot of people like reinstall windows when they get a new cpu but i just wanted to make sure that you're aware of that the second thing again was the windows account manager when i went to log in my pin didn't work. Uh, I had to log in with my Microsoft account, not my password, not my pin. Uh, and then when I logged in, this account protection had a red X on it. I had to click on it and reconfigure my pin, Windows Hello, uh, and reconfigure my, my actual sign-in options for Windows. So just be aware of that. Make sure you have your recovery key on standby as well as uh, understanding or access to your Microsoft account so you can reconfigure that once you get into windows or the actual os now we're going to get into some data but the system is a b650 oris elite ax revision one the memory is from corsair 6000 megahertz and yes faster memory will give us even greater performance on our ryzen cpus and an rtx 3080 i feel like this system is more indicative of what the average end user throughout the world will be playing with so would this be a significant upgrade for them because not everybody's got a 4090 but was it an upgrade for me well let's go over the slides and then we're gonna break it down a little bit further afterwards. Sherman! Hold temper! The 
First up on Thrones and Liberty, we're basically anywhere between 15 to 30% increase over to 7950X when it comes to gaming. But gaming isn't the only thing I do. Yes, I do wind up using my laptop to edit my raw footage on this system that is recorded and saved on the system that we're, we tested on. Uh, so it doesn't really bother me too much, but it would be a downgrade compared to 7950X in other arenas. So we see here... 198 max basically average let's focus on average and one percent lows right now 146 uh for the 9800 x3d versus the 125 and the one percent lows 81 versus 72 uh the clocks the 9800 x3d just locked in right we've seen this with gamers nexus j2 cents and a number of other youtubers once the 9800 x boosts to where it wants to stock right with nothing else just xmp profile enabled it just sits on it and it just gives us consistent gaming experience very smooth actually even compared to the 7950x which has more threads and clocks higher as you can see here thermals not too bad you can see the 9800 x3d has plenty of thermal headroom as we looked at the slides uh whereas the 7950x just will hit thermal limits pretty darn quick hogwarts legacy uh, my wifey's favorite you can see that our one percent lows basically doubled moving to the 9800 x3d uh, while we got a few uh, above, you know, as far as averages go like that, uh, the max is 173 to 128. Uh, the clocks, again, the 9800 X3D is boosting and staying at its boost. Uh, didn't play around with PBO. We could extend the limits a little bit further if we really wanted to. Not too concerned about that. Thermals were perfectly nice and cool with the Corsair H150i Pro. And then we saw Battlefield... Uh, even with ray tracing enabled, pretty good. But our 1% lows, probably kind of an outlier because the 3080 and ray tracing on Battlefield 5 is meh, uh, to say the least. But we did see, you know, 30 extra FPS uh, average compared to the 7950X and even greater maximums. Uh, CPU thermals, again, 7950X is just hitting that limit and staying pretty high. 80 degrees average, 79 degrees average versus 62 uh, on the 9800X3D. And then the Tomb Raider game, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, uh, not a lot, not a title that a lot of people play, but still one that's still relevant in my mind as far as DirectX 12 titles. Uh, you know, 167 average versus 130 on the 7950X. Now here in the compute space, yeah, obviously the 7950X is going to take the win. And believe it or not, with BIOS revisions, as we talked about in the channel for the 7950X, even the latest ones that would allow you an X3D CPU can give you a significant uplift in performance so if you have an old cpu and you haven't upgraded yet make sure you update your bios but you can see single core wise uh they're basically on par in my mind it's not going to be that much of a, a difference so i'm not too concerned about that yes the workload or compute workload render workload whatever it's going to take a little bit longer but again i use my laptop to edit so it's not too bad uh you can see the clocks in the cinebench r32 just locking it up sitting right there no fluctuations while the 7950x did drop down to 4875 but obviously the multi-thread score was just so much higher on the 7950x and then thermal wise while we did peak out at 82 on the 9800 xd the average was 78 while the 7950x was hitting those thermal limits and staying at those thermal limits or maximums as far as it could now pc mark 10 not really used or not a lot of people i saw utilize it uh, I saw a pass mark in a couple of our favorite, uh, favorite um, channels data, but look at this. So web score, 15,800, about a thousand less than a 7950X, but everything else is pretty much on par with the 7950X with productivity like Excel or different worksheets, essentials, uh, kind of the same thing, right around the same. And then PC mark overall score. The 9800 X3D beats out the 7950X by a little bit. So while it does drop in Blender, uh, especially Adobe Premiere, like an encode, right, of the same file, 6 minutes and 30 seconds long, 4K, while we did almost double our time uh, to render that, that job on the 9800 X3D, 
you know, compared to the productivity or some of the other essentials and web score, like it's pretty much pretty good. Like I, I, I have no complaints whatsoever. I don't think it's a downgrade for me personally. It might be a downgrade for others that might be using more compute centric workloads. But as far as gaming and then moderate compute render, whatever workloads, this is a nice little upgrade for me. But let me know what your thoughts are of the 9800X3D down in the comment section below. You can see here what the thermals were during a render. This thing has plenty of thermal headroom in my opinion. You could even take it a step further. I'm excited to see what the LN2 or exotic coolers do with it. Uh, but yeah, it's a really damn good CPU. So it is an upgrade for me, but it might not be an upgrade for you. Again, somebody with a 7600X uh, and maybe like a 3070 or maybe a 4060 Ti, this would be an upgrade. But if you're if you're playing around in the in the 7950X, the 7950X 3D stuff like that, you might as well wait till the 9950X 3D comes out. Hopefully that CP won't be a disappointment, and we'll still get to uh, utilize all the benefits of 16 core, 32 threads, and the extra V cache to leverage whatever your compute or render or compile workloads are, but still get optimum or decent gaming performance. But right now, the 9800X3D is the gaming champion, taking that title from the 7800X3D. I would like to see AMD drop the price on that, to be honest, uh, but we'll have to wait and see. But I want to hear from you down in the comment section below. Let me know what your thoughts are on the CPU, and I will bring you back some more data in the future when we actually swap out the X870 motherboard from Oris and replace the B650 and just compare those two. What is the actual upgrade going from that motherboard version to the latest and greatest gen? But stay tuned for updates. Make sure to hit the like button on the way out. Get subscribed, hit the notification button to stay up to date as well. Check out additional links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here. And you just have yourself a wonderful day. Take care, I'll catch you next one.